Wonderland. How's it going, everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Glad to be back on another foraging update video here in the early summer. It's June in Washington, but it's beautiful. It's raining. So what we've been hoping for, it was like the driest, warmest May ever. I was getting really worried that we were just not going to see any more mushrooms till fall. But luckily it's beautiful, it's gray, it's rainy, it's how us Northwesterners like it. So we're going to go out into the woods, discover what kind of mushrooms are growing out here right now. And uh, I'm the vice president of the local mycological society in Kitsap County, Washington, right down near sea level in the Kitsap uh, Peninsula, which is in the Puget Sound Basin, right across from Seattle and we have a pretty moist habitat here but we do have dry summers so we're going into what could be a dry long summer so this rain is definitely welcome and there are mushrooms that are popping up out here right now so let's go into the woods and uh, check out what mushrooms are growing and I'll help to describe them for you and uh, we'll have a good time so make sure to hit that subscribe button and come with me into Mushroom Wonderland. Came across this pile of uh, probably maple logs right here to see um, this Paziza cup fungus growing on it. So these these cup, these ascomycetes, so they're kind of related to uh, morel mushrooms. Uh, you might recognize these. They like to grow in gross places on old plywood and things like that. But look, here's even an even bigger one. But as I look over here, look at the size of this thing. Holy smokes, I've never seen a cup quite that big. That's a big Paziza cup. Bigger than my hand. It's huge. Really dark color. This one's definitely <laughs> old. But look right over here. Oh, here's some more nice big ones. So these are not the auricularia or the, uh, the wood ear. Oh, cool. There was a bunch of slime mold that fruited right here recently. Probably like yesterday and it's already just like toast. But uh, look at that guy. Oh man, that's huge. Another another big one down there. Another big one over there. So I've heard that these are like edible and stuff, but never enough quantity to really ever want to try to eat them. But if, if I ever did, you know, this is the time. A lot of Paziza cup. So these are an ascomycete. They produce their spores a little differently than your average cap and stem mushroom. These have little tubes called ASCII that produce spores and they actually eject the spores out um, pretty forcefully with a little, like a little puff of air behind it. <laughs> but that's the same as morels, but a lot of them growing right here. So they really like this wood and this habitat and this amount of moisture. Never seen them growing quite that big, but Paziza cup, pretty common. And uh, that's a cool fruiting of them. Check this out, growing in these beautiful little clusters right down here underneath this, uh, it's like a western red cedar, but it has nothing to do with it because these are saprotrophic mushrooms. But these ones, Chlorophyllum bruneum, these ones, one of the shaggy parasols, and it's gonna have white gills and a white spore print. These ones are a bit dried out, but they also will stain a reddish color when they're moist enough. These are a beautiful and an edible mushroom. They could look a bit like Chlorophyllum molybdides, which actually doesn't grow here in this region of Western Washington. But uh, these ones with the, uh, the dark scaling, really pretty white underneath is pretty indicative of the Bernaeum. A uh, typical around here Chlorophyllum racudes is a really common shaggy parasol and it's a lot shaggier on the cap. These ones, the, uh, the scales are a lot more integrated into the flesh, but like I said, it's gonna have that white spore print beautiful they do stain a rusty color when they're damaged these ones just might be a little bit too dry though but really nice edible mushrooms growing here on the in a, some beauty bark on the side of the road in western washington so very nice chlorophyllum bernayum 
So right down here in the grass of the local park, we can see a really, really common grass mushroom that might be growing in your lawn even. This one in the genus Paniolus, which typically a pretty dark spored genus of mushrooms, but this one commonly known as the mower's mushroom. Really kind of a bland little brown mushroom. Um, it'll often have this lighter color around the edge of the margin right here. And they do have a dark brown, blackish spore print. And some of the um, relatives of these are actually hallucinogenic mushrooms. Here's one that's a little bit drier and lighter colored. And you can see the younger ones are much darker. The Paniolus synctalis or the Paniolus cyanescens are all um, hallucinogenic mushrooms that often grow with cow manure. These Pan Paniolus phonosecchii or the mower's mushroom, these guys, um, even though listed in a lot of the old field guides as being hallucinogenic, are not. Um, they just love growing in grassy lawns um, after some rain or especially irrigated lawns you'll find these super commonly i've seen them in hawaii i've seen them in minnesota i've seen them everywhere and right now in washington they're fruiting like crazy so no shortage of little brown lawn mushrooms paniolus phonosecchii or the mower's mushroom oh what'd you find a mushroom. oh that's beautiful do you know what that's called alia this one is called the rishi and it's very soft and very young. This one is a medicine mushroom that people make medicine out of. So smooth right here. Yeah, it's very smooth and soft feeling. And there's another one, looks like bugs might have ate it. Oh, whoa, look at the big one. There's a big one I saw. Beautiful. And here's another one right here. Ganoderma organensi, this one. The Northwest oh, Reishi mushroom, look at that. Oh yeah, the bugs like to hang out on them. Oh, Look how a, fresh. I think there's a bug dig a hole right there. Probably. This one's really fresh though. Look at that. So some people make medicine out of these by making a tea and then they sip the tea. So it's growing on an old hemlock. This is a dead tree. So these mushrooms like to grow on a dead tree, but related to the lingxi or the mushroom of immortality. There's so many mushrooms on there. I know. They really think this tree is yummy. Look at that. But yeah, the bug's definitely eating that guy. Pretty cool find though here in June in yeah, summer. The bugs definitely ate that guy. Yeah. Yeah, but look inside. That looks cool inside. Yeah. Gunner's like, come on you guys. Cool find. Good job. Oh, there's another young one starting to grow right there. They call it the lacquered conch. Look how shiny it is. Oh, I didn't see this one. But it's not, it's not wet, is it? No. It's dry, but it's so shiny. But it looks wet, doesn't it? Very cool. All right, let's keep walking. See if we can find any more mushrooms in the woods. Do we see some? Oh, yeah. Cool. So we have Pleurotus species. These are called oyster mushrooms. Remember when we found these before? No. We found them when we were hiking up by the mountains. And so these ones are called oyster mushrooms and people eat them. They cook them up and eat them. But look, there's a baby slug. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> but the oyster mushrooms, a lot of people like to eat them, but the bugs really get at them. So growing here on this little big leaf maple. And uh, these are cultivated for gourmet mushrooms. They have gills. They're beautiful. Uh, that little baby swuggy is so cute. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so cute. The cutest baby slug ever. The slugs and the bugs, they love them some oyster mushrooms. See those gills basically go all the way down to the base. You could take a clone of this and grow it on, on agar, put it on grain, and just start cultivating this very strain. He's so cute. 
Oh, I love baby slugs. They're so adorable. Oh, I found one. I found a mushroom. Another mushroom. Oh, yeah. Cool. That one looks like it's... Oh, it's got gills. It's a little inosibi. These guys can be poisonous sometimes. You want to leave those little brown mushrooms alone. Don't ever eat that, okay? Okay. Unless we know exactly what it is. But that one might be poisonous. But it's just growing all by itself. What? Gunner left us. Don't touch that plant. That's that devil's club. That thing's got... Look at those thorns. Whew. Dangerous. Here. Follow me. These are growing in just a sandy area next to the house. You can see <laughs> they popped right up out of the sand. And uh, there's a couple of young ones that are just coming up right now. And through the course of the day and probably by tomorrow, they're going to look like this. They just deliquesce into ink. These guys in the Copernopsis family, um, you could compare them to Copernopsis lagopus or the hare's foot uh, mushroom because when they come up, Actually, these probably aren't even that close to that one because, but look, it's got a little tomentos layer. I can rub it off really easily with my finger. And uh, I guess it looks like a rabbit's foot when it's popping out of the soil or the sand in this case, but uh, very fragile, delicate little mushrooms and they go from sprouting out of the soil to, uh, to something like this uh, in about a day. So this little black remainder of what was there is just covered in spores there's um they drip down the spores get there in the soil they get carried on people's feet whatever and uh just continue the life cycle so michael beekman he's the he's the copernoid expert and uh there's even a facebook page called this looks like a job for michael beekman these might be a job for him because i don't know the exact species but uh I do know they're in a Copernopsis, black spored little inky caps. So there you go. This is the next morning. These guys have grown up into this. So not exactly in a matter of hours, but Copernopsis grows very, very fast. These guys are all covered in sand. And you can see the older ones have just totally wilted away. So short life cycle, delicate beautiful little mushrooms. Man, once in a while, you just smell fungus in the air. I've heard some people claim that they can uh, smell masataki, you know, from 100 feet away and stuff like that. I don't know, maybe it's true. I mean, I haven't experienced that, but sometimes I get a big whiff of mushroom smell. Who knows where it could be coming from? I don't know. If you are one of those people that can smell the pine mushrooms in the forest, put that in the comments because it's curious to me and I, I just want to know if that's actually true. I've hunted a lot of Matsutake, I can't smell them. Same as the Prince, I've heard people say they can smell that almond scent, which I have smelled that, but a lot of mushrooms kind of have that smell, so. I don't know. The rain smells so good though. Growing right down here in between these two big chunks of wood. It's a mushroom looking a little bit old, but I'm still curious as to what it is. It's not really obvious to me yet. Um, oh, wow. So look at that, pink spores. So not pink gills. These are white gills, but they have pink spores and that's what's giving it that pinkish hue. So this guy is a Pluteus, uh, the deer mushroom. Probably Pluteus uh, cervinus 
Um, there is a species of this mushroom that is actually hallucinogenic, although that one, Pluteus americanus, doesn't occur here in the PNW that I know of. Um, these can take on a lot of different colors, shapes, sizes. Sometimes they're super thick and dark colored. Sometimes they're a little more flimsy. These ones always grow a dead wood, saprophytic mushroom, and the gills aren't attached to the stipe. You see that? And they have this pinkish hue to the gills because the spores are pink. If you were to lay this down on a piece of paper, it would leave a pink spore print. Generally edible mushrooms, although not highly favored. Don't know anybody that goes out seeking them. The Pluteus cervinus, the deer mushroom, or the deer shield mushroom. Real common growing on wood here. Big devil's club. They even have thorns on top of the leaves. You see that? Yikes. And then look at the stem. You can see why they call this the devil's club. You do not want to mess with this plant. Although it's used for a lot of things by the native indigenous people here at the PNW. A beautiful plant associates with wetlands. This one is actually uh, flowering, so. But not one you want to accidentally fall into. It's like the cactus of the PNW. Me and my daughter, Aaliyah, are out here in the woods looking for, what are we looking for? We're looking for mushrooms. Yeah, see what kind of mushrooms might be growing out there here. There might be amanitas. Amanitas. Which one's the amanita? Can you point at it on my shirt? Yep, you know your mushrooms. All right, let's go. You found some mushrooms? Yeah. What do they look like to you? They look like some wood. They kind of do look like wood. How does it feel? Is it... it feels so soft. Oh, it's very soft on top, huh? But huh. They call these tiger's eyes. Do you see why? Yeah. They kind of look like eyes, huh? Yeah. Coltrica... Perennis. Oh, these are like grown together. But yeah, inedible oh, little polypore. Oh, a big fruiting of them, huh? Baby one. They're also a little baby. Those are beautiful. A little baby too. Good find. Right on the side of the trail. Coltrica perennis or the tiger's eye. I guess it's supposed to look like an eyeball looking at you. Can you see that? Does it look like a little eye maybe? They're pretty, huh? Dude, these guys are stuck together. Yeah, they fuse together like that. It's really weird. But these kind, you don't want to eat these. A spider ant. What's that a spider? There would be like eating a piece of wood or a pine cone. You want to feel it? Do you know it's safe to touch mushrooms, but just don't swallow them, right? Yeah. You could touch the poisonous mushrooms, but definitely not eat them. That's right. Do you see some mushrooms on that log? Yeah. Oh, look at that big one. Oh, wow. They grow on a lot of the logs and stuff. This is called the red belted conch. They're really hard, huh? Yeah. It's just like a piece of wood growing off of this dead tree. So this mushroom is actually inside of this tree. And it's eating, and this is just a little part that we get to see. Weird, huh? Fomitopsis monsiae. That's kind of a hard one to say, but it's so hard. Yeah, we call it the red belted conch. It's a tree conch. There's also a weird mushroom right here. This is a weird one. Yeah, I think it's just a baby of the same thing. And there's more growing right here on the end of the log. So pretty. Oh, we found another one, huh? So. Oh, look at this kid. <laughs> yeah, it's the kid. Oh, huh? there's another one. Oh, another one over there. There's a whole family of them. These ones are called uh, they're Entoloma or Nolania holoconoidea, the little cone bell. This one is so pretty. These, oh. ones, these ones could be poisonous, so we definitely don't want to eat these. Little brown mushrooms like this, you definitely don't want to eat them because some of them can kill you. You know that? Oh, this is a cool plant, the rattlesnake plantain. It looks like a 
It looks like a house plant that accidentally ended up in the forest, huh? Yeah. Variegated leaves. Really beautiful. Yeah, I'll feed it this. <laughs> okay. I don't think it works like that, oh, but... I found a little funnel. That was a big mushroom. Oh, inside there? <laughs> that was a big... Somebody dug out the big truffle. Whoa, look at that leaf. <laughs> it looks like a face. <laughs> That's scary. It looks like a face. Wow. Whoa, those are big. Look at that. Oh, don't don't hurt this one. Yeah. They're pretty. Look at all those. These are pluteus, so the deer shield mushroom. Big cluster of them. Wow, look at that. Pink gill. Oh, this part is so golden. Yeah, they're kind of dried out from the sun. There's another cluster of them right there. These are edible. Whoa, look at this one right there. It's a kind of pink. Oh, it's a fresh one, yeah. It's kind of pink. Yep, from all the all the spores that fell out of those gills. Made it look pink. Oh, there's a mother beauty. That kind of looks pink right there. Cool. It smells kind of good. Yeah, can I smell it? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't smell bad or nothing. Stripes on there. Yeah, she found a cool feather too. Blue jay feather. And uh, Pluteus cervinus, pretty common saprobic mushroom. Dumping a lot of spore, Hi. a lot of pink spores. Hi. <laughs> it's red. Whoa, that's cool. Pretty. Be gentle with it. Let's just let's see what it looks like underneath if we... Oh, Whoa. wow. Looks so pretty underneath it. What what color do you think those gills are? Yellow with orange. Yeah, that's that's good. I think this is a conosibi or a conosibe. Some of these are really poisonous, little guys. So cool. It is cool, but yeah. you definitely don't want to eat it. It's the bottom. Yeah, I see it. Bottom is so poisonous. Well, they're the same ones. These are the grown ups. So, on the trail, next to this thistle, a couple of more conosibi cone caps. These ones have really tall, skinny stems on them. And uh, these guys also could be very poisonous. They got this reddish orange spore print. There we go. Conosibi rugosa. Foliotina rugosa has a ring on the stipe. This one doesn't. But a very long stipe. These are some LBMs that you should be aware of. Dangerous ones. Alright, so right here it's the next morning. Here is the, it's the mushroom cap on the slide and on the paper when we move it away. Aha. Uh -huh. We can see the spore print. It's a rusty brown color. And now we can take that slide and put it in the microscope. I'm going to use the smallest objective. We got a trillion spores out of that one tiny mushroom cap. So you see those streaks, these are all spores. There's a ton of spores. Each line is from each gill. So I'm gonna magnify it more with a larger objective. This would really help if I had a microscope that was set up to be capable to have a camera attached to it. I'm just free shooting through the IVs with my... So in order to tell the spore size, you actually have to measure 30 different spores. And I have a little measuring device that you can do it old school, like analog, but they even make... Uh, computer programs that'll count them for you but 
not going to get into all of that, just showing you kind of what the spores look like. All right, now we're on the 40 times objective with a 10 times IP, so that puts it at 400 times objective. So there they are, the spores of the conosopy. And that little dot you see in the middle of the spore, they kind of look like a sesame seed with a little, little bump in the middle. That little bump is actually a little pouch of oil that will, it's a nutritional oil that will feed the germinating hyphae until it finds its own food source. Pretty magical, pretty awesome. So there's the spores. If we were to run these through like pixie meter, it would count 30 spores and all of their measurements. And then we could see the exact spore size. Or I have a little piece that actually goes into the eyepiece and I can measure these analog and then um, use the spores to help determine the exact species of these. But um, I'm not gonna go to all of that on this video. If you guys are interested in that kind of a video, holler at me in the comments. Right on everyone, so that was fun. And uh, thanks for coming with me on this foray here on Mushroom Wonderland. And I hope you have a good week. And we'll see you uh, on the next one. So take care. Much love. Thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.